All right, y'all see that title. We're back with another map, 28 basketball teams on it, six extraneous player faces, and plenty of reasons for y'all to yell at me in the comment section. I went through the all-time roster on NBA 2K23 and slated each player onto their hometown team. In most cases, I relied on a player's listed birthplace on basketball reference. However, I did make certain exceptions for notable legends like Steph Curry, Michael Jordan, who both famously grew up in the state of North Carolina. Those two are a good example, though, of the second step I took in building out this roster. Some areas are are simply too populated with legends. In the case of New York and LA, I distributed players as evenly as possible to the Knicks, Nets, and Clippers Lakers. Illinois and the aforementioned North Carolina also had too many legends, so I distributed those players evenly between their hometown NBA team and the most famous college team in the area. You sticking with me so far? The final step I took was eliminating all areas that had fewer than five legends. Some of those player states are the ones represented by single players on our map who will come into play in due time. In the case of both Florida and Texas, I decided to formulate state super teams rather than have four or five sparse rosters. If you're wondering why I forgot to include current player X in the video, I'll say again, I use the all-time roster specifically, which doesn't include very many current players. Again, you'll see it all as the video unfolds, but if you do have any issues with the roster, with the map, well, just go ahead and yell at me in the comment section. I can't really stop you, and honestly, more comments is good for the algorithm. Our wheel would actually spit out a few less consequential matchups to get us going. Chicago would easily dispatch of a weak Milwaukee team, Prime D Rose with 23 to lead the way. Then my beloved Canadians would have the displeasure of facing the Magic Johnson-led Detroit Pistons, and yeah, that did not go well. Finally, the wheel gave us a Midwest OKC versus Arkansas matchup, and the Razorbacks are for real, I cannot lie. All three of the winning teams added a new weapon, after the game as each winning team in this video will get to steal a player from their opponent. From there, we moved on to our fourth game, which would also be the first one with a free agent upgrade on the line. Alabama taking on Kentucky with Penny Hardaway of Memphis up for grabs. And would you look at that? It coincides with our first epic battle of the video tie game, just over two left. Cliff Hagen going to work with a floater. He missed it. Dave Cowens on the glass. The old man getting it done. This Bama team is led by Jeff Malone, Charles Barkley, Ben Wallace. They got a squad, but this is going to be a bad shot. Yeah, a fake away from Jeff Malone, but Ben Wallace is there on the glass. That's just what he does. Good finish. Kentucky is really set to let Cliff Hagen cook, and uh, Cliff Hagen always shoots the ball a lot in every video, but Ben Wallace can't grab a defensive board. Cowan's there again. This is a huge chance for Alabama. What was that shot, Jeff Malone? How did he just make that? Can Kentucky hold the ball and get a good last shot, get the win here? Or does Bama hold on and force OT? Honestly, I think Rondo can go right past Larry... Oh my gosh, in the clutch, a lob, wow. That was honestly a great play, Rondo the King. They don't have a point guard out here to get them a good shot, and uh, Jeff Malone, he just hit a crazy clutch floater, and he bricks a potential game win. Tough L for Jeff Malone, DeMarcus Cousins. Dude, this Charles Barkley never shoots enough. And that's our first huge swing matchup of the video as Charles Barkley joins Kentucky. As well, they scoop up Penny Hardaway as a free agent from Memphis. They've also definitely put a big old target on their back now with all that real state, but they definitely earned it, Kentucky. They were really good in the clutch there. Rondo, what a stud as New Orleans. Okay. I think New Orleans has an outside shot of taking on Kentucky too, but never mind. They're going the other way. West of New Orleans is into our Texas State super team. This should be fun. The state of Louisiana has produced some epic legends. Bill Russell, Carl Malone, Clyde Drexler, Bob Pett. It really never ends. Yeah, this is a powerhouse. And I mean, even with all of Texas thrown together, Jimmy Butler, Grant Hill, Bill Sharman, Chris Bosch. I mean, on paper, this is a mismatch. And I must admit, um, Texas, they did fight for about three quarters. New Orleans obviously winning by a lot. 17 points though. It could have been worse is all I'm trying to say. I would be scared for the rest of our map, especially with the Pels adding Jimmy Butler now. But trust me when I say there are plenty of loaded rosters still to come. Alas, the wheel cared not for the Pelicans being a powerhouse because they would end up sending the Clippers with the compass right back into the belly of the beast, baby. Clippers, Pelicans, oh boy. I was just expecting Expecting as per usual, we'd have a battle of LA, but I guess not. The Clippers have a chance to uh, add another player, and this is the roster I came out with for them. It's pretty equal with the Lakers, like I mentioned in the intro. And obviously, obviously, I reverse jinx the Pelicans because this game was a battle through three and a half quarters with the Clippers actually being in control throughout. And yeah, LA holds a four point lead with under two minutes left. I do not see Kawhi Leonard out here for the Clippers to close this thing out. I don't love that, but uh, DeMar, that's a reasonable shot. Yeah, he made it on the fade. I guess screw Kawhi, man. It's more important that the uh, Pelicans figure something out. They got so many studs. De'Aaron Fox, most clutch player in the league out there pulling up and bricking. But I guess the coaches are going to do what the coaches do. Baron Davis! 
from out of no... That might be a dagger. Kawhi didn't close this game out, but he had 31 to lead the way for the Clips. Yeah. In any event, Bill Russell is a great addition for the Clippers. In the blink of an eye, Texas changes hands. Once again, the Clippers now own the it. The Bulls have already taken a dub this video. Now we get to see Illinois. And after the compass sent them southwest, they were going to Arkansas with Jason Tatum, free agent upgrade on the line. I showed a quick look earlier, but just for reference, the Bulls roster ended up looking like this, led by AD, IT, and Prime D Rose. Where Illinois, who's about to hit the floor, has Dwayne Wade, George Mike, and Dan Issel, Tim Hardaway. Both teams absolutely loaded. And with the chance to add Tatum and then some, Arkansas has Pippen, Moncrief, Fat Lever. They have no depth though, so this could be a problem. Ah, Arkansas, I knew they might be in trouble. They're still within a miracle shot in this one, but they can have zero empty possessions. Oh, that three would help. Sidney Moncrief, you bricked. I think this is the last chance for Arkansas if they don't get a bucket. Blake Griffin, who they stole from Oklahoma City. Yeah, that's their best option in the clutch. I'm not sure about that. Blake gets stopped by Issel, and that's game. A major coup for Illinois, who grabs Scotty Pippen from Arkansas. Scotty coming home, kind of. Well, wrong Illinois school, but you know. They also add Jason Tatum from Missouri. And once again, we've got a player with a big target on their back. Illinois has got lots of territory. The wheel and compass would clutch up, giving us an all-time matchup. Detroit for the second time this video, heading south, slightly west into Indiana, which means it's another installment of Magic Johnson versus Larry Bird. Both dudes have stupidly loaded teams. I mean, look at Larry. He's got Oscar Robertson next to him. And Oscar Robertson is an example of an exception I made to the birthplace rule because Big O was technically born in Tennessee, but moved to Indiana when he was 18 months old. So yeah, that's his hometown in my opinion. Both teams were throwing haymakers for the first three and a half quarters of this game with Detroit firmly in control until a late run from Indiana. And the Pacers are back to within five with under three minutes left. And uh, yeah, I know y'all see it as a Mel Daniels dunks right there. Ignore the fact that they're playing on the Seattle Sonics court. I'm not really sure why that's happening. It's a 2K glitch, but what can you do? I actually usually don't pay attention to who's home and away in these videos, to be honest. So maybe a neutral location makes sense. Look at Magic going at Big O, drawing free throws. Oscar trying to go right back at Magic. That's a tough... Man, why are you forcing that up? In the clutch, Chris Webber would get it done from the low block, a contested make as Indiana was up against it. And finally, Larry's about to get involved. He, oh, they need it. They need it. And Larry bricked it. I don't love that. Big O was great for the Pacers. Larry Bird, not so much. And a combination of D-Book, George Gervin helped carry Magic to win. And just like that, we've got now Magic and Larry playing together. Sure, why not? The Pistons continue to launch their attack from the north. And they'd be pressed immediately back into action as the New York Knicks were attacking them from the northeast. Let's go. If by no other factor other than having 99 Kareem, this is the better of the two New York teams. Not by much but uh, yeah, they're going to be in tough against that Pistons squad. And I just realized how bad it would be if the Pistons also win and get to add Kareem. That would be nuts. The Knicks are hanging tough though. Down three under two minutes left. Floater from Donovan Mitchell. Man, I don't love that shot. Donovan Mitchell pulling up again. This man has the ultimate green light and it's not working right now. What great awareness. Richie Guerin is way too small. Don't, d d not sure why you needed all them pump fakes, Larry, but that's such an easy bucket. Kareem 28 and 12, but couldn't get a touch in the clutch. Detroit steals Kareem from the Knicks, and uh, yeah, good luck rest of the map with what is But it? oh my gosh, Brad, the wheel would not give us a break as it landed outright on the Pistons. Oh boy, sent them east, which I took to mean into Brooklyn territory. I don't know, maybe I was wrong, and Brooklyn is indeed the true New York team with the better roster, you know, more heart, lunch pail type of team. Um, I kind of doubt it, but let's see. Brooklyn would indeed scrap and battle as I sort of predicted and sort of doubted, but they they were good enough to hold a lead late in the fourth. All right, who are we kidding? I did not predict this. Brooklyn up five. Brooklyn literally just needs to kill clock. Mello, I don't like you going early, but that's a tough finish from prime Carmelo Anthony. And Brooklyn's going to keep running sets here for Carmelo Anthony. I did. Tiny Archibald just went right past Magic. Wow. Okay, that was a great play. Brooklyn made their free throws down the stretch and simply outplayed the Detroit Pistons. Brooklyn born and raised Carmelo Anthony led the way with 24 points, a huge bucket in the clutch. Kareem returns home to New York and we're shown once again, literally anything can happen in these videos. Adios, Detroit. We hardly knew 
Liu Yi. And we've already lost 10 teams off our wheel, and there's still a bunch we haven't seen, including Charlotte. Yep. This will be interesting for many, many reasons, as I will explain. But let's see, Charlotte is heading west. Ooh, which is into UK Kentucky's territory. All right. And I mentioned in the intro, but North Carolina was one of the states that was so full of stud legends that I was able to split it into two teams. In fact, I was able to make a team of players born in North Carolina who went to UNC led by Michael Jordan. That team's going to be awesome. And it still left over another loaded roster for the Charlotte Hornets led by CP3, Steph Curry, who, as I mentioned, grew up in Charlotte. As we know, Dominique Wilkins also grew up in North Carolina. This team is amazing, man. They're going to be in super tough though against Kentucky, who remember added Penny Hardaway, Charles Barkley. And interestingly, Charlotte is starting Steph over CP3. A decision I'm not sure paid off as Charlotte is down three late. And here in the clutch, they actually have Steph and CP3 out there together. That makes sense. Steph is bricking. Can Penny and Chuck close it out for their new team? Dude, Rondo is dropping dimes this video, my word. Here goes Steph in the clutch. You need a big shot. Defers to Chris Paul in the corner. Dude, both have missed wide open clean looks. Still a two-point game. These teams going back and forth. Penny, that was an awkward looking three and he missed it. Charlotte can tie or take the lead here. Zion going at Chuck and drawing free throws. Unfortunately, Zion Mills would miss a free throw in the clutch. And after Cliff Hagen hit a couple in the clutch, Charlotte was on their last leg. Oh, Chris, man, they subbed out Steph like, Chris Cook and he missed it. This game was right there for the Hornets to take, but they couldn't hit enough clutch shots. Also, Zion's D was pretty weak. Honestly, he's going to have to go back, grind a ton of tape before his next matchup. Also, he should work on his basketball skills too. I am pretty surprised this Kentucky team beat Charlotte. They have no depth, but yeah, lots of top end talent now adding Steph. We've already seen both New York teams at this point, so why not New Jersey sending them into the District of Columbia Wizards territory? New Jersey, a sneaky contender in this video, Shaq. Rick Barry, Kyrie, they're very deep. And yes, as we know, Kyrie was born in Australia. Another example of me using where a player grew up for this video. You get it by now. And usually KD is hung out to dry in these videos, but here he's joined by Elgin Baylor, Adrian Dantley. No depth, but they've kind of got a squad here in Washington. Unfortunately, as I feared, the Nets did win rather convincingly. And why are they in Cavaliers jerseys? That's another glitch. My bad. Kevin Durant, low key, the perfect addition for this New Jersey Nets team. I like it. The wheel wouldn't give New Jersey a rest either as they were right back up. The compass sent them southwest again, this time into Virginia. Moses Malone, Allen Iverson, David Robinson, so many Hall of Famers, but so many centers. I don't know if it'll work. David Robinson was technically born in Florida, but after his father retired from the Navy, they settled in Virginia, which is why I put him on this roster. But unfortunately, all them centers, those Hall of Fame centers on Virginia, yeah, they didn't have enough balance. And yes, this game was played in Cleveland, apparently. Instead of a another big man because they already have Shaq and Towns. I decided to bring Allen Iverson to the Nets. We're low-key barreling towards a Nets versus Nets battle for the Northeast and I kind of love it. We'd set that on the back burner though as South Carolina came up on the wheel heading south into Atlanta, Georgia. I was pretty stoked when I made this South Carolina team. Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Alex English, John Moran, Jermaine O'Neal. They have a perfect starting five. They have no bench but that might be enough. Unfortunately Atlanta on the other side, I mean they're very good. They are deep Maybe they don't have that top end talent quite the same. I don't know about this matchup. And wow, I did not think, I thought either way, this would be a super close matchup, but it's not. That's a 20 point difference. I mean, look at Ray Ray and John Morant leading the way. Jermaine KG filling up the stat sheet. Yeah, I couldn't pass up giving 97 overall Walt Frazier to South Carolina, which probably pushes John Morant to the bench, which isn't the worst thing. An extremely rare super early exit from a video for the Atlanta Hawks. We continue to stay on the eastern side of America as we get Cleveland for the first time, sending them west right into Brooklyn Nets territory. Oh boy. We know what Brooklyn's about. They've already pulled off one of the biggest heists of this video, but LeBron James, John Havlicek, Jerry Lucas, and Cleveland, yeah, they're gonna be a tough out. Oh, more than just a tough out? The Cavs have a four-point lead under a minute left. It's not over for Brooklyn, well, for either team, but Melo needs to get something going right now, and he's gonna drive to the paint, draw free throws, that'll do. Cleveland can go for two for one. LeBron's gonna pull up, bam! 
Dang! LeBron just did that. Okay. LeBron running point went 32, 3, 14, 3, and the dagger. And even though he keeps taking L's wherever he is, I'm gonna add Kareem 99 overall to the Cavs roster, of course. Just 13 teams remain. We are definitely into the second half of this video, and the Clippers are back up. There's so many teams, especially out on the West Coast, we haven't seen yet, but the Clippers again, sure, heading mostly east. And I'm gonna say whatever way you slice that, that is into Illinois territory. Okay, a couple heavyweights here. And it definitely wasn't a blowout between these two heavyweights, but not a clutch finish either. That was kind of a crazy... Iggy pulls up for three. Oh, he missed it. Okay. Dwayne Wade joins the Clippers. Okay. And that is now a whole lot of territory for the LA Clippers. Wow. And the Clips would get a chance to add to that as we landed on Florida for the first time. But when they were sent west, it was into new Clippers territory. And our Florida super team is honestly pretty super. Vince Carter, T-Mac, Mitch Richmond. He's a 94 in this game. Kind of crazy. Artis Gilmore. They've kind of got everything. Florida has a little bit of everything. And now a W plus whoever they steal from the Clippers. Wow. This is a massive shift and they just handled business. Vince Gilbert and T-Mac all had just really, really good star performances. Bill Russell on the move. Once again, I've got him joining Florida. New starting center for them. And once again, the bulk of our map switches hands. It's Florida's time now. At long last, we'd have the arrival of Michael Jordan in this video as his boys were off to take on South Carolina. How fitting. A whole lot at stake here for both teams territory and adding a really good player either way. As predicted, this game was a fantastic battle. Neither team was able to grab a foothold in the first three and a half quarters, but late, it was South Carolina who opened up a lead. Michael Jordan fading for three. What in the... Dude, don't tell me Mike's panicking. It's too bad we didn't see UNC earlier, maybe with a chance to add a weapon before this game, because yeah, they're going to come up short. MJ, 19 points, 9 assists, but shot 7 of 20 in a loss. Wow. Of course, we'll let Michael live on in this video with South Carolina, but that was still a gnarly choke by him. And my reverse jinx didn't work as we once again landed on Kentucky, sending them southwest. We've got Florida up again. Two of the favorites in this video, the biggest movers and shakers. One of them's about to fall. And playing at a neutral site, we had another clutch finishing coming. Yeah, this game's taking place in Alabama for some reason. Kentucky is up one, clinging to this lead. Rajon Rondo. Rajon Rondo from the mid-range misses, but Wes Unseld was there for the flush, the putback. What a play. T-Mac is usually so money in these situations in every video, but that's a miss. Wow. They aren't clutch, Florida. It was all about efficiency here for Kentucky, who hit nearly 50% of their threes. Florida just couldn't get it going from the perimeter. I've seen Bill Russell lose too many times in this video, so we're sending T-Mac from Florida to Kentucky. And now Kentucky is the big bad of this video. I also gave them their true royal blue colors. They've earned it. Just nine teams remain on our wheel. We still have three or four we haven't seen once, and that won't change. We get South Carolina, bro. This wheel is cr it's crazy. I have never seen it so lopsided with which teams are playing. It's high-key unfortunate because we're going to have a team that is so loaded coming out of the east part of the states, they're just going to run through the west anyways. I casually just glossed over the fact that we've got South Carolina versus Kentucky. This could be like a final matchup, but we're getting it already. And wow, a Cinderella run is over. I mean, I guess South Carolina wasn't really a Cinderella story, but a bit surprising how they were dominating. Uh, not meant to be, though. Kentucky handles business. Coming up next on First Take, how Michael Jordan choked once again and ruined yet another team. Just for jokes, I wanted to not add Michael to the Kentucky Wildcats, but let's see if he ruins another team. I mean, I mean, then I will have to put my foot down, but good luck, Kentucky. At long last, we would finally get sent to the West Coast, not intentionally, as Chicago was directed there via the compass, going through Minnesota. Kevin McHale is up for grabs. Well, for the first time, we see Seattle, who's got a pretty good lineup. John Stockton, Byron Beck, Zach Levine. Yeah, but they have no depth and no big men. This should be an L for them. Yes, another iconic reverse jinx by yours truly. Derrick Rose taking the screen from former Sonic Jack Sigma. Okay. They're developing a play for Latrell Sprewell. He's open, but he missed. This game is wide open for Seattle. Byron Beck going to work again, shoving people out of the way, missing, but putting back his own rebound. That was intentional, I swear. Brother, imagine if Seattle gets another stop here. This would be nuts. Derrick Rose firing though. Derrick Rose. Um, okay, he was going for the two for one. We'll say that's why he did that. I don't know how Seattle perpetually has this mismatch. They have no big men on their roster. Yet yeah, Byron Beck is... Oh my word. It opens up a wide open look. Zach Levine. Wow, that is a huge shot. Jason Terry, 34 points. Byron Beck all over the place. Paul, yeah, all their NBAers pulled through. And on top of the W, they get to add a center, which they so desperately needed. They didn't have a single one on the roster. How did they win? Ah, and I forgot that game was for 
Kevin McHale, the free agent upgrade as well. Their front line just got boosted. Seattle might have a chance here. Let's go. That Seattle green creeping across America is gorgeous. Down to just seven teams remaining. Our next West Coast domino would fall. It's the Warriors heading up into Seattle territory. This time, free agent Kevin Johnson on the line. I wouldn't say this Warriors team necessarily needs another point guard with Jason Kidd, Gary Payton. I moved Dame Lillard to shooting guard. Um, This is a really even matchup, I believe. Well, gosh darn it. I guess having all them point guards works. I'm not ready for this Seattle run to be over after just one game. I got way too excited about that one. I need them to back it up with another W. Come on, make a comeback. Dame Lillard blowing right past whoever that was out there, man. This Warriors unit closing this game is hilarious. Peyton Kidd, Lillard, Isaiah Ryder, four guards and a center. And it worked. They shot 45% from three with 15 makes. Yeah, that'll do it. The Warriors definitely didn't need point guard Kevin Johnson free agent from Sacramento, but it is what it is. They also steal Kevin McHale from Seattle. That'll help. Congrats to Golden State, but honestly, we're all losers for losing that sonic screen from our map. It's just so ugly and blue now. The wheel would spit out Golden State once more, and Southwest, well, the closest we can come is sending them to the LA Lakers territory. Only one California team will be left standing after this battle. Harden, Westbrook, Marcus Johnson, Kevin Love, Clay Thompson, Reggie Miller. The Lakers could be cooking. Okay, then both teams are cooking. We've got another clutch finish. Okay, they did sub in Paul Pierce to the Warriors. That's wide open, Dame. That's wide open. Dame is so good in these simulations, especially if he's wide open. Much to my surprise, in short order, Russell Westbrook matched that three with a step back triple of his own. If you give the ball back to... This ball is getting shot by Russell Westbrook. I knew it. I knew it. What? No free throws there is kind of crazy. This is chaos. Jason Kidd for three. He bricks it. Finally, the Lakers grab board. Okay, all that work they just did, they better score here. Russ going transition coast to coast. No free throws again. What does Jason Kidd have on the refs? Dame would hit a pair of free throws and LA would take a timeout. Unfortunately, on the inbound, what were the Lakers doing, dog? Jason Kidd got away with fouling the F out of Russell Westbrook on back-to-back -back possessions in the clutch, then gets a greasy steal. At the outset of this video, Golden State had easily the worst roster of the California teams, but they add James Harden and they've become the final California team standing. I went ahead and gave them their gold color scheme. Yeah, just a few teams remaining, dude. Five to be exact. We've seen all these teams in action at least once now, and we're back to New Jersey. Can Joyzy take down one of the other heavyweights from the East Coast of America? Let's see. Oh yeah, here they go. East into Cleveland territory. Jerry West from West Virginia is up for grabs. That's huge. Jerry West was and is the single best free agent upgrade available. He would help both these teams so much. Oh wow. Looks like Jerry West is going to be helping the New Jersey Nets. Dude, Cleveland. That was kind of a lackluster performance. Even with Kareem putting up 26 and 10, LeBron 18 and 9, that's not good enough. A massive turn as Le Super Team joins the Nets, as does free agent Jerry West, 97 overall, bruh. And as New Jersey's territory expanded, I did notice there actually is still one team we have yet to see in this video. And with just four teams remaining, do we see them now? Yes, sir, e Bob, Philadelphia. Just ignore me saying yes, sir. Bob. Actually, this compass spin literally doesn't matter because there's only one team Philly can play. They're encompassing them all around Nets, Sixers. Let's do it. Had we seen Philly earlier in this video, I would have said they were an out and out favorite to win the whole thing with Wilt, Kobe, Pete Maravich, Paul Arizon, but they've had no upgrades. They're going to need a super clutch underdog performance here. But who better in the history of the NBA to answer that call for a clutch performance with his back against the wall than Kobe Bryant? He showed showed up, he showed out, and somehow these loaded nets just folded under the pressure. Dude, I cannot believe it. I thought at least this would be like a clutch finish. Maybe Philly loses, but a win and a blowout win? Kobe finished with 23 points, 16 assists. He shot 11 of 15. That is hilarious, dude. And LeBron joins MJ as perennial losers in this video. Like with Michael Jordan, though, I am giving LeBron one more chance to prove himself next to Wilt and Kobe, and they're gonna need him. Because as Philly took over all that Northeast real estate from the Nets, there were only three teams 
remaining? Which team will get a pass through to the finals? And will we see free agent Chauncey Billups in this video? I'm not sure it really matters, but Kentucky will be heading in a direction west. Uh -oh. Now, unless I finesse the system west from the Kentucky logo is directly into Golden State, it doesn't go through Denver, meaning, yeah, Chauncey, I guess we're not going to add him to any team from this video. It doesn't make sense to try and force him onto Kentucky or Golden State here just because. So salute, Chauncey. We just did not need you. I don't know why I just did that. There's a clear talent advantage for Kentucky in this matchup, but why would we doubt Golden State? They've been so good so far. Oh my... <laughs> Bro, what is this? What am I seeing in our second to last game of the video? I asked why we would doubt Golden State at this point. You know, I was kind of tongue in cheek. I mean, they've only won, what, two games? But uh, yeah, all those point guards, nobody over a 95 overall. I don't think none of that matters. They they are so good. What? Dame Lillard carrying the team with 30 points. Jason Kidd, a double-double. James Harden, a double-double. I mean, they're just efficient, lethal. It looks like NBA Twitter was right about you all along Michael Jor Gamble aka Jor Poker aka you just choked again I couldn't bring myself to add Michael Jordan to the Warriors he's lost too many times they don't need a point guard so I didn't give him Steph Curry but Dave Cowens he's the center they've been looking for no legends over a 95 overall on this roster I don't know how they are doing it I guess I need to just stop asking questions and embrace it man Golden State is off to the finals against Philadelphia who has played one total game thus far how crazy man we've seen Golden State State's final roster. This is a look at Philly's LeBron added to Wilt, Kobe, Pete, Maravich. I mean, they were one of the most deep rosters off rip, but uh, we've just barely seen them. This is wild. And once again, Golden State's unexplained magic was on display. Despite going down double digits in the first half, Philly was in control. The Warriors turned the tables completely. That while Philly still leads, Golden State has brought this all the way back. Two point game under two minutes left. This is exactly how I love finishing these videos with clutch moments. Pete Maravich is bricking. Truly anything can happen. Harden is out there with uh, Lillard, Kid. Harden's getting to the free throw line. I really need Pistol Pete to give this rock up. He cannot chuck another shot. Oh, wait, good pass. Kobe back door with the flush. Okay. I just don't know who I want shooting for the Warriors. I don't know if they want either. It's just Harden every time. And never mind. They take it back. They know what they want. It's Harden from three. This possession is not looking good. It's going to have to be a Kobe bailout. This is his specialty in the clutch. Pump fake, pump fake. Why are you giving it up, Maurice Lucas? Yes. <laughs> Maurice Lucas with a floater from the free throw line. He was standing still. What? I'm not going to lie to you all. Kobe might have just gotten bailed out. But you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if Philly pulls off a win. Golden State going for the final shot. Harden on the move. This is kind of an ugly possession, but that's a good look from deep. He missed it. Cowens on the glass. Oh my gosh. Dave Cowens at the buzzer wins the video. <laughs> No way. Wilt had 29. Kobe had 20 in a loss. LeBron, another choke. While Dave Cowens just stepped up and ruined everyone's dreams. The way Kobe even forced James Harden into a horrible shot on the final possession. Golden State, though, still escapes a miraculous finish on a Cinderella run to the finals. I really, really wish I could recommend another video with a clutch finish like that, but I've literally never seen anything like that. Go check out this video, though. First to Victor wins. It was a whole lot of fun in its own right.